Yo what's going on guys Tan my here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and in this video tutorial we're going to be implementing the bubble sort sorting algorithm so this is the part 2 of bubble sort sorting algorithm and in part 1 video what we did is we understood what exactly is bubble sort we saw the theory we saw the working and we also saw the algorithm okay so we basically dry run that algorithm we saw what happens behind the scenes and how exactly the bubble sort sorting works So if you don't know the behind the scenes and the working of bubble sort then that video is definitely going to help you out do check out that video in fact i will drop the entire playlist in the video description but if you just want to see the code that is the implementation part the programming part then this video is just for you make sure you watch this till the end and we will implement the bubble sort sorting algorithm so i'm going to be using c++ programming and as you can see on the screen i have already opened up my dvc++ id but you can use any other general purpose programming language because the algorithm is going to be the same right so what i'll do is i'll drop the algorithm on the right you can see on a black screen that is that algorithm it is just few steps small algorithm easy algorithm which we are directly going to convert in c++ code so starting off in the int main i have already typed in a little bit of code you can see so here we'll take the input and this is our bubble sort algorithm function so this is the function wherein we will actually implement the bubble sort but in the main function let's actually first create some arrays and let's take user input in the int main function so i'm going to say int my array and i'm going to keep the size as static you can make this dynamic and you can take the size also from user but for simplicity purpose we are just keeping it as 5 then i'll say see out enter five integers in any order okay now we got to use the for loop to take an input so i'm going to say i equals to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus in the for loop we are simply going to say c in and my array of i that's how you take input in a array okay after taking the input what we'll do is we'll just copy this entire thing and paste it over here and we will say before sorting okay and we are just going to use the same for loop but this time we will use it to print the array So I'm gonna say my array of i, and then concatenate a little bit of space between the different elements. Okay. So after this, what we will do is now over here, once we take the input in the my array, and we have printed it before sorting, right? So now we want to perform the sorting. So here we will call the bubble sort function which we have created over here. You can see. So I'm just gonna copy this. and now we will pass the array that is my array inside this function so i hope you know how to create functions in c++ programming if not i have a complete c++ programming tutorials also so i'll drop that playlist as well you can check out the different topics related to arrays and functions so when you pass this my array in this function do note that arrays in c and c++ are passed by address okay so you can see our void bubble sort function takes in an array as an argument right so this a is not exactly an array it is a pointer to this my array only okay so we are taking in my array as address so this a and my array are basically pointing to the same memory address in fact this a is a pointer to the base address of this array now if you don't know what is pass by address pass by value pass by reference in c++ or c what i'll do is i'll drop a link to the video which clarifies that i've tried to explain it in very simple terms do watch that but just note that in c and c++ by default when you pass an array in a function it is passed by address and not passed by value the basic integers and the other data members are passed by value but when it comes to array it is passed by address okay just keep in mind so after you do the sorting what we will do is we'll again copy this and paste it over here and we'll say after sorting right So this is where the real sorting is happening. So obviously we have to still write the code, but this is something that happens inside the main function. Now let's come to the actual implementation of this algorithm which you can see on the right and we will convert that into the bubble sort function. So starting off, you can see we have step number 1 which is declaring the iterators i and j. Now in when it comes to programming, we don't need to declare i and j separately because we are going to use them in the for loop only. So we'll directly start with step number 2 which is basically the outer for loop right so i'm going to say for int i equals to 
Now I should be less than the size of the array. What is the size of the array? Phi. You can see we have hard coded the size. When you're taking this size from the user, then you'll also have to pass the size in the function. Okay. So you'll also have to create one more variable saying int size. Okay. For you first have to take size from the user, then you have to create an array of that size using dynamic memory allocation and then pass that array as well as the size. So you'll pass int size over here also. Okay. And then you have to use that size. So you have to say I less than size. But since we have hard coded this value as phi, things become simple for us. So I'm going to say I less than phi and then I plus plus. So this is the outer for loop condition, right? Now, as soon as we go inside the outer for loop, we have the inner for loop. You can see in this step, which is step number 2.1. Now for the in inner for loop, we have for in j equals to zero, obviously we are starting from zero, but the condition is j should be less than five, which is the size. So n is the size. Okay. N minus i. So five minus i minus one. So this is the condition, which is very important to remember. And then we have j plus plus. Okay. So don't forget, this is the most important condition. I'll put this in bracket also. So J should be less than phi minus I minus one. Okay. Now inside this, we will perform the comparison. So we will say if A of J is greater than A of J plus one. So we are picking the current element. We are comparing it with the element, which is just besides it to the right of it. And if A of J, that is the first element is greater than the second element. Then we have to do the swapping, right? Because we are sorting or we are performing bubble sort in an ascending order. So all the smaller elements need to be to the left and the larger ones to the right. So this is that comparison happening over here at step number 2.1.1. So if a of j is greater than a of j plus one, obviously we need to perform swapping. So inside this, if in the algorithm, you can see I have written swap a of j and a of j plus one, but the swapping needs to have some code, right? We need to write some code to perform that swapping. So we'll use the simple logic of creating a temporary variable. So I'm going to say int temp equals to a of j, a of j equals to a of j plus one and a of j plus one equals to temp. I hope you know this simple swapping logic. I also have a program performing swapping in the C++ tutorials playlist. You can check that out later. And that's about it. That is the only thing that we have in the if condition, which is swapping. If you come outside the if condition, we have ending of the inner for loop. You can see and coming out of the inner for loop, we have ending of the outer for loop. So we have pretty much written the code for bubble sort. Now the only thing we just need to compile and execute this. So let's see if this works. This is our custom function. This is our main function. Let's save this. Go to execute, compile and run. Okay, we got a little bit of error. Let's see what that error is. Okay, so int i was not declared. Okay, so I forgot to type in the data type over here. Don't make that mistake. This was just a syntax error. Over here also I've made that same mistake. And over here also I've made the same mistake. Okay, let's just save this. I'm pretty sure it should work now. Go to execute, compile and run. Yeah, as you can see, it is perfectly fine. Keep this window over here. You don't need the algorithm now. You completely implemented it. Let's enter the five integers. Let's enter any five integers. Four, three, six, one, and seven. So obviously this is not in proper order. If I hit enter, there you go. You can see before sorting four, three, six, one, seven, and then after sorting got printed over here. But after sorting we have one, three, four, six, seven. So we have a proper ascending order. I just need to get this to the next line. So let's do that. So before after sorting, I'll do endl over here one time, save this again, go to compile and run. Let's do this one more time. I'm gonna enter some random values, five, three, two, six, and one. So it should be one, two, three, five, six, right? So let's hit enter. There you go. Before sorting, we have the same array as printed as it is five, three, two, six, one. And after sorting, we have one, two, three, five, six, which means our bubble sort sorting is working perfectly fine in a descending order. So yeah, this was the bubble sort sorting algorithm implemented using C++ programming. The algorithm is going to be the same as I mentioned. You can use any other programming language. And that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. 
let me know in the comments how this video was and i'll see you guys in the next video peace